Hi there, my name is Alok and I'm a product manager on the QuickBooks payroll team. I'm here to talk about multi-factor authentication and our plans to introduce it to QuickBooks Online Payroll. But first, what is MFA? Well, MFA is a way to authenticate or verify a customer identity by sending a unique one-time code or one-time password to a pre-registered mobile number. You might've been asked to complete this step when logging into Microsoft Outlook, Amazon, or in some instances, QuickBooks Online. The goal of introducing MFA is to deter fraud and product abuse by malicious actors. And applying MFA in sensitive payroll flows will enhance the protection and security of our customers, their money, sensitive data, and identity. So just like your employees and your customers trust you with their information, Intuit is committed to ensuring that we provide you with enhanced security tools and systems to make sure that it's really you trying to log in and use your account and company. So what are we doing to make sure that your information is safe? We're introducing MFA to sensitive payroll flows across the payroll module. I'll touch on these payroll flows on the next slide. This change will impact US customers using QuickBooks Online Payroll Core, Premium, and Elite. And eventually, we will introduce MFA for Canadian customers as well. We'll start rolling out this change or rolling out MFA to various flows in June of 2022 and slowly roll out MFA to other flows over two months. Here's a quick summary of all the workflows we're adding MFA to. So you'll be asked to complete MFA when trying to add or edit employee or contractor bank accounts view or edit FEIN, SSN, business number during tax setup, view or edit employee social security number or date of birth, and when you want to view social security numbers or date of births in employee reports. All right, let's take a look at what MFA will look like in product. So here I have a test company file. I've navigated to the payroll tab and I'm on the overview page. I want to draw your attention to this blue box. The blue box is a way to raise awareness around this change we're introducing across payroll. It's, it tells you that we're adding a new layer of security and gives you an option to find out more. Upon clicking this, you'll see a little bit more information about multi-factor authentication and how to prepare for it. The first thing you need to do is ensure that your contact number associated to your user ID or account is accurate. If you find that this number is inaccurate, you can always update your number by clicking this link, going to the Intuit account manager, navigating to the sign in and security tab, then the phone section and updating or changing your phone number. If your phone number looks good, you can come back to QuickBooks Payroll, review the rest of this information. If you need to add or delete users, you can always click on the Learn More article there and follow the steps in this article to add users if you need to. But for now, let's click Got It and take a look at multi-factor authentication in action on the employee profile. So I'm gonna to go to the employee profile and click on an employee's name. Once on the employee profile, you'll notice the blue box with the same information one more time. The purpose of adding this notification in three different spots is to ensure that we're raising the right level of awareness and giving you an opportunity to prepare for this change before you need to perform MFA and view sensitive information. So let's go down to the personal information part and you'll see this SSN and date of birth are masked. To view this information, I click into the card and click view and edit. This opens up a modal asking me to send a one-time password to the phone number associated to my account. Once I click on that link, I get an OTP within seconds. I'm going to add that one-time password 
in this field. Click continue. And just like that, I've verified my identity. All looks good. And I'm able to view and edit my employee's birth date and social security number. Next, let's take a look at multi-factor authentication when trying to add an employee's bank account. I'm going to go to employee three's profile, go to their payment method card, click the drop down. Now, before I click direct deposit, I think we all expect to be asked to complete MFA again. However, we recognize that completing MFA each time you need to view sensitive information or complete an important task like this, completing MFA is not ideal. We've already verified your identity once. And since we've done that, once you click on direct deposit, you'll see the routing number, account number, and confirm account number fields without having to complete MFA. What this means is we will ask you to complete MFA once per session. If you log out and log back in, you'll be asked to complete MFA one more time. But once you've completed MFA in that session, you won't need to complete it again. You may need to, on occasion, click a certain link which says view or edit, but other than that, you're all good to go. Let's test that out. So I was not asked to complete MFA when trying to add this employee's bank account information. I'm going to go to my reports. And in my reports, I'm look for an employee report. Let's look at the employee details report. Now this report shows me my employees DOB and their SSN. Now I can click view in any of the four places where I've provided this employee's information. I want to look at employee two's date of birth. There, I click view, was not asked to complete MFA and I'm able to view the, the DOB for employee two, employee one, as well as both their social security numbers. Cool, let's take a look at multi-factor authentication in the tax setup flow. Right. So in this flow, I'm gonna go back to the federal tax step. Now I've already provided my EIN and when I come back to this screen, I see that my EIN is masked and I need to click this link to view or edit. Now since I've completed MFA once in this session, I shouldn't be asked to complete MFA again. I'm going to click it, and there it is. It's unmasked. I can edit it and hit next. And now if I go back, it'll be masked again, but the last, last digit has been updated. That's MFA in the, con in the tax setup flow. And finally, let's take a look at multi-factor authentication in the contractor's flow. Before I do that, I just want to simulate the experience when you restart a session. So I'm going to log out and log back in. I've started a new session and I have navigated to the contractors tab. Here I see contractor one and contractor two. I want to add my bank information for contractor two. So let's click pay with direct deposit. Down here, I see that the bank account section gives me the option to add. Let's hit add. And like I said, mentioned before, I have not completed MFA in this session. So I'm going to send an OTP to my phone. Two seconds later, I have the OTP. I'm going to add it in here, verify my identity. And as soon as it's verified, I can see this modal, which allows me to input my contractor's bank account info. Just to recap, you may be asked to complete multi-factor authentication when trying to add or edit employer contractor bank accounts, view or edit EIN, social security numbers or business numbers during the tax setup, view and edit employee social security numbers or date of birth, and view social security numbers or date of birth reports. I just wanna quickly add that we may potentially introduce multi-factor authentication to other sensitive flows 
in payroll, flows that we have identified but have not been able to add MFA to, and flows that we haven't introduced to the product just yet. That's it for today. Thanks so much for following along, and I hope you have a great day. Bye now.